Welcome back to another episode of the Pod Dog Exclusive. Today is Wednesday, which means it's time for the midweek long run. We are up here in Noosa on holiday on Queensland's Sunshine Coast, and I'm going to take you through my midweek long run, and along the way, I'm going to talk to you about how I schedule my summer training. So come along for the journey. again for this run. I end up doing quite a lot of my double runs, midweek long runs, sometimes my long runs in this shoe. Um, yeah, pretty similar to the solar drive, but another great running shoe. So it's a pretty well-known fact that for all runners around the world, summer base training is absolutely vital and it's a great time to pretty much fill the gap in between outdoor track season and the upcoming cross-country season and it allows runners essentially to recover and relax a bit after a strenuous long outdoor track season and then get really fit and strong and then towards the end of summer training quite fit and fast for the upcoming cross-country season. In terms of what summer training actually refers to, it's not necessarily talking about your specific training for the exact summer months, but it's more the time between outdoor track and cross-country. So for in America, that is happening right now. So it's pretty much from the end of May to the end of August. That would be the summer training block for most American high schoolers and college students. And for the Australians who are watching this, or really anyone who's in the Southern Hemisphere, that summer training time period would be from late September, maybe early October when cross country is all finished up, through to late December or early or mid January when track season starts into kind of come into gear. Also with summer training, I think it's really important to remember that you're trying to stay fit and healthy throughout that whole period. And if you do it right, it's a great chance for you to get really fit and be really strong going into your next cross country season. But if you get overexcited early and you kind of try and attack too many workouts or try and get too fit too quickly, you definitely can get injured very easily. And if you get injured, you potentially can write off that whole summer training period, which then can be detrimental for your cross country season. And then from that, it can also be detrimental for your indoor and outdoor track seasons the following year. So it's definitely best to go into summer training with the approach of just trying to slowly build up, be consistent, get all of your work done almost early on as conservatively as you can while you're still building up because your body is still recovering from definitely a very strenuous and potentially very long track season. All right, so in today's video, I had a request quite a long time ago now to talk about planning summer training and talk about kind of what I get up to in my training life in that summer training base kind of period. And so in this video, obviously I'm showing my Noosa midweek long run and during that I'm gonna talk about what I do on a day-to-day -day basis throughout the summer training period. By the way, you can also find all of my training on Strava as well. There's no real secrets to what it takes to be great in running. Running is a very simple sport, so I don't hide any of my training. I think it's good to be able to you know, show what you're up to. And I think Strava as well is really great for kind of keeping yourself motivated and seeing as well what other people are up to. So if you want, you can follow me on Strava as well to see what I actually am doing in my training.
so Monday is the start of my week. I know some people start their week on Sundays, but for me and on Strava as well, Monday is the start of the week. So Monday for me is a very easy day. I do two runs on a Monday, one slightly shorter and one slightly longer. And usually while I've been home at least in Australia, I do my longer run in the morning. So that longer run is anything from probably 12 to 16K, which is about eight to 10 miles in the morning. Just super comfy. I try and get on some grass if I can just to kind of minimize the risk of chronic injuries like stress fractures that can occur from, you know, too much hard surface running. So just by going on some grass, a nice, easy, super slow jog every Monday morning is a great way to start the week. And then Monday afternoons, I go out for, depending on whether I've done my short or my longer run in the morning, I do the other one. So if I've done my eight to 10 mile run in the morning, I'll go out for a four to six mile or six and a half to 10K easy run. And if I did my short run in the morning, I do the opposite, obviously. So on Mondays, I end up doing quite a big day overall. It kind of ranges from about 20 to 25K, which would be around 12 and a half to 15 miles. So it's a big day, but it's a very, very easy day. It's a great way to get in some big mileage but you're really not kind of putting too much strain in your legs. And if you can get a run done on some grass, it's definitely a great way to kind of minimize the stress on your you know, bones, muscles, and joints as well. Tuesday for me is my first workout day of the week. So while I'm at college in America, we do an easy run in the morning and then a workout in the afternoon. But while I've been home in Australia, I've actually been getting up very early to do a training session with the Burt Squad. So the Burt Squad is a local group of really good runners who I've been training with. And we start very early in the morning. Sometimes on a Monday afternoon, I'll do strides after my easy run, just to kind of get the legs moving a bit before doing a workout on Tuesday morning. And that workout on Tuesday mornings, they vary a lot. It can be anything from K reps to 400 reps, 800 reps, fart legs, anything like that. So I think Tuesday is definitely a great day to get a workout in. You've had an easy day on Monday and yeah, Tuesdays I get my workout done in the morning, which is a great way to kind of build a bit of speed into your training program. And then Tuesday afternoons, usually I, in America, would have my workout, but obviously while I've been home, I have been doing the workout in the morning. And so I go out for an easy kind of four to six mile run. So that's about six and a half to 10K, super easy. So with that, the workout in the morning and then the easy jog in the afternoon, Tuesday's mileage usually ranges from kind of 18 to 24-ish K, which is in the range of about 11 to 15 miles. And that, that definitely can vary but something in that sort of range is what I usually do on a Tuesday. Wednesday for me is another vital day in the summer training program. Actually, every day is definitely very important. And as I mentioned before, it's not any single day that is gonna make you great. It's the combination of every day of the week, you're doing the right thing, and then you're stringing together, you know, 12 
even potentially more, especially with coronavirus, potentially four months of really consistent, good training is what is going to help make you have a, you know, really good cross country season. So Wednesday for me is my midweek long run day. I usually only run once on a Wednesday and I generally will try and get it done in the morning while I'm at home in Australia. But if I fancy a sleep in on a Wednesday, I only run once. So if I want to go in the afternoon, which I did in Noosa, the video you're watching right now, I can go in the afternoon. So for my midweek long run, I'll usually go anything from 11 to 13 miles, but generally it will be around 12 miles, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on how I'm feeling, which is about 17 to 20, maybe 21K on the odd occasion if I feel good. And with this midweek long run, I generally like to go a bit quicker than most people would probably run their midweek long runs. I think that as long as you feel good, I don't think it's an issue to go a bit quicker than you usually might on an easy run. And so for my midweek long runs and sometimes even my long runs, I like to just get moving a bit. You're not going hard. It doesn't turn into an effort, but you're just moving a bit quicker so that you, at the end of the day, you feel like you've done a bit of work, but it's not taking too much out of your body. It's just kind of adding another layer of fitness on top of what you already had and giving your legs just a little bit of a challenge the day after doing a workout. So as I mentioned for me, Wednesday, only one run usually and my total for the day is usually around 11 to 13 miles or 17 to 21K. miles. We're down here at the local cricket club, getting in some easy grassy laps. Recently I've been loving doing quite a bit of my running on the grass, doing big grassy circles. I don't know if you've seen it on my Strava or not, but quite a lot of my runs recently have been on the grass, just to take a bit of pressure off the legs when I'm running such high mileage. So currently 356 per K average which is about probably 615, 620 per mile. Super comfy, probably a bit quicker than some people like to do their longer runs, but I love to take my short runs easy and then just get moving a bit and feel like doing a bit of work on the longer runs. So about another 9K, or just under six miles to go, and we'll see you when we're back on. Alright, Thursdays for me are another very easy day. I generally will definitely run slow in the morning and in the afternoon. So I do double on Thursdays. I will run twice, but usually both runs are super easy. And then in the afternoon, sometimes I'll add in some strides. But for me, usually Thursday is very similar to my Monday. So in the morning, I go out for a slightly longer run that will range from about 12 to 16K, which is about eight to 10 miles. And then in the afternoon, I usually do a slightly shorter one, probably four to six miles or, you know, six and a half to about 10K. And again, like Mondays, if I can find some grass, I will do that just to take a bit more pressure off the legs, especially when you're running such high mileage. As well, on Thursdays, after my longer run, so whether I've done it in the morning or the afternoon, depending on which way round I end up doing them, I will add in some strides after the longer run. So with my strides, I just like to maybe six by about 100 meters. And I kind of play it by ear. Sometimes I feel like doing three and I call it a day. Sometimes I'll feel like doing six strides just to really feel good. It's kind of like a, almost a mini speed session, not a speed session exactly, but you're just moving your legs a bit more, getting them ready so that you don't kind of forget how to run quickly when a lot of your mileage is quite slow. So I think definitely Monday and Thursday for me, a few quick strides are a great way to keep the legs moving before workout days. So with that, my total mileage for a typical Thursday is kind of around that 12 to 16 miles, about 20 to 25K. And yeah, again, super easy day. Friday.
Fridays for me are another one of my workout days. So obviously I've done a workout on Tuesday and then Friday rolls around and I do another workout. So usually while I'm in that summer base training phase, which I've been in now for a few months because of coronavirus, I do a longer threshold run. And I've been running them again with the Burt squad every Friday morning in a local park. There's a loop that goes around a road and it's only about half a mile with a small hill each lap but it's a great road for doing threshold runs on. So we go anything from about 25 minutes or around about five miles through to half an hour or just under 10K. Actually, the other week we ended up running through to 10K and that took about 31 and a half minutes, I think. So with threshold running, you can go off your heart rate. I think a lot of people do wear heart rate monitors but I don't actually have a heart rate strap and um, I think my watch heart rate can sometimes be a bit dodgy. So me and the boys end up just going out and running a solid half an hour, 25 minutes, whatever it might be, so that you feel like you're working hard but you're not going all out. You could go longer if you wanted to, but it's definitely a great way to feel that fitness coming in. I think threshold running is a really great way to improve your fitness and being consistent with them, doing them week in, week out, you will definitely start to notice that you get a lot stronger. So then in the afternoon, I do anything from four to six miles. Again, super easy. That's six and a half to 10K just really comfy. I'll go on grass if I can, or I'll just go for a jog with some of the boys. And yeah, just another really easy run. It flushes the legs out and gets in a bit of extra mileage as well. So with that, the threshold run and the easy double run, my Friday total for mileage ends up being about 17 to 24K. So it can vary a bit. But again, a very solid day, plenty of mileage in the bank, a threshold run as well. So a great way to end the working week on a Friday. Saturdays for me are the easiest day of the week by far. Depending on how many miles I've run during the week so far and how many miles I'm planning on running in my long run on Sunday, I can either take Saturday completely off, which I was doing for a while, or I'll end up doing anything from kind of five to eight miles. Super easy, a very slow day, just to, again, add in a bit more mileage, but it's very slow and very comfortable, so you're not really adding any extra strain into your legs. Again, if I can get on some grass, I will, just to take any of that extra stress off the legs and keep it super easy. So with that, my total mileage for Saturday is usually about five to eight miles, which is around about eight to 12 K. the end of the week. Sunday for me is my long run day. I think most people end up doing their long runs on a Sunday. In America, while I'm in America for college, we actually long run on Saturday. But because I do workouts in Australia on Fridays and Saturday is a super easy day for me, I end up doing my long runs on Sunday. And long runs, as I mentioned earlier, are definitely very important. They're a good way to get that muscle memory of actually you know, running for an extended period of time. And as well, it's adding to your mileage, increasing your strength, and it's really good for you mentally as well. I think to finish the week on a high, you get a really solid run done. And yeah, Sunday long runs are definitely a vital part of summer training. So for me, my Sunday long run usually at the moment is about 26-ish K which is just over 16 miles. So when I'm at college in America, our long runs are usually anything from about 13 miles to 16 miles. And that kind of depends on what we've got coming up. So if we've got a race, you know, the following week, 
or if we've just raced, we'll probably cut the long run down slightly just because your body is quite tired and you don't want to overstress your body. Whereas if you haven't got a race for potentially weeks or months, like we've had during this big base training phase, you can kind of start to extend your long run a bit and build on it and increase your mileage in order to get stronger, get that muscle memory of running for extended periods of time. So earlier in the video, when I was talking about my Wednesdays, I mentioned that I generally like to go a bit quicker than super easy pace for my longer runs. And so usually on Wednesday and Sunday, I end up doing a bit of a quicker long run. So for me, on my easy double days that I've discussed, I really like to just run super slow and then on my long run days we'll start off nice and slow and then I like to build it down and sometimes I even like to start them off a bit quicker and I end up averaging something like 340 per kilometer for a 25k run which would be about 555 per mile for about a 16 mile long run. Again, with this, I think you've definitely got to listen to your body. As cliche as that sounds, I think it is definitely very important. And if you don't feel up to running a bit quicker or something like that, you really should take it very easy. And I definitely am all for taking long runs super easy from time to time. In fact, quite a lot of my long runs do end up being very comfortable the whole way. But if you feel good and your body feels kind of ready to just inject a tiny bit of pace, you know you've got an easy day on Monday. And so I don't think it really harms to just pick it up a tiny bit. So with the long run, my total mileage for Sundays usually ends up being about 13 to 17-ish miles. Recently, I've been doing about 26K, which is just over 16 miles. That's it, the midweek long run is done. 19.3K, 3.53 per K average in the end. Around about pretty much bang on 6.15 per mile for 12 miles. And what better way to finish off than down here in Noosa at the beach. So that is the end of the video. My midweek long run is done. It was a great run up in Noosa. I am now back home in Brisbane and I've talked about every day during the week. So in summary, Mondays for me, very easy day, a double run. Tuesdays, workout day with a double. Wednesdays, as you've just witnessed with my midweek long run in Noosa along the beaches is my midweek long run day. And as I said, I usually only run once on a Wednesday. Thursdays, super easy, like Monday, a double run, nothing too strenuous. Fridays, workout day and a double. Saturday, easiest day of the week, nothing strenuous at all or even a day off. And then Sunday, long run day. So with all of those runs during the week, my total mileage over the last four weeks now has been about 93, 94 miles which is around about that 150k mark. However, every so often I will have a down week and I definitely recommend every so often having a down week. You don't necessarily have to schedule them in, you know, every fourth week or every sixth week or anything like that. You can do that, but if you don't want to have to schedule them in every, you know, four or six weeks, you can instead be listening to your body, see how you're feeling when you're running easy, see how you feel in workouts. And if you just generally start to feel a bit tired on your easy runs or start to feel really tired in workouts, which was actually happening to me a while ago before I had a down week, I think definitely having a down week where you just have a few days easy, maybe a couple of days off, really will benefit your training quite a lot. Also, running 90 odd miles a week or about 150k is quite a lot of mileage and I definitely wouldn't recommend 
starting to do that unless you've really built up to it. So I've been running 120 or 130k a week now for a very long time. And when I came back to Australia because of coronavirus, I built up to 140. I sat at around 140 for quite a long time before picking up to 150. And so with your summer training, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you really don't want to overdo it early. So slowly building up is definitely the way to go about it. You've got such a long period of time to really get those miles in. And so starting nice and comfy and feeling good is definitely better than feeling good early, overdoing it, and then injuring yourself. Next week on the Fog Dog Exclusive. Welcome back to another episode of the Fog Dog Exclusive. It is currently about 20 to 5 in the morning. Me and Brooke are on our way to New Farm Park this morning and we're going to do the Burt session. See Fog Dog and the Burt Squad take on a huge session early morning at New Farm Park in Brisbane. Really? Oh, yeah. Ready to go. <laughs> See all of this and more next Thursday, July 16th, 7pm Central Time. Only on the Fog Dog Exclusive. Morning. Morning what? Morning, brother. <laughs>